apply for the pulse width modulator, Lego Uno or Arduino. This is the power supply for the inductor. This is the power supply for the capacitor bank. That high voltage capacitor, high frequency is there to capture any spikes that come off the flyback. Coil will fly back into here. And tie up the flyback dads are there in both poles. The poles flip, double pole, double throw relay. So I'm getting, you know, around this area here on the coil, I'm getting a north south, north south, north south as the poles flip. And the same thing on this side, north south, north right there, so it's flipping. So I wrap here a piece of Romex with two terms. We got the arms of the coil over the uh, area where the where I was picking up the most EMF was on the edge of the coil. Like, you know, so I made this coil throughout the arms, two arms. <laughs> now with uh, generating current, you're supposed, to, you're supposed to pass a north and a south over the arms of the coil. So that's one arm of the coil, that's the other arm of the coil. You're supposed to pass a north and a south. Attach to a rotor, over the, like so, pass it over the two arms to make your alternating current. I'm just doing an experiment here, so I'm not expecting much, but I'm oscillating DC pulses through a double pole, double throw relay in reverse polarity, like, you know, the pulse are flipping. Like so, using this relay. Okay, so I wrapped this pickup coil just to see what kind of AC volts I get out of it. So I'm going to measure the AC volts out of the two, two, two terminals, two ends of the coil. I'm going to measure the starting voltage on the battery and what's left in the cat bank that's been sitting for almost a week. It was up to 13 volts. I just measured it. It dropped down to four and a half volts. That might be, you know, you're not supposed to have that kind of drain on here, but I think there's resistors on here doing that. So I might, you know, build my own cat bank later and get rid of those resistors because they're just causing drain on the system. Just to, you know, they're like a slow drain on these caps, obviously. I guess there's resistors on there. So I'm gonna probably swap this out. But it's good enough for so let's plug in the uh, oscillator. Okay, first let's get our voltage on the battery. This is the voltage on the battery. 13.32. That's your battery voltage. Oh, it's draining into the coil. My bad. It's a double pull, double free relay. So when the relay's off, it's still energizing the coil. It's dumping into this coil. So. The only time that the relay's not sending power to the coil is when it's being put from one end to the other and it's in the middle. All right, let's do this. So. Put the voltmeter here on the battery. Just gonna monitor the battery voltage right now. Okay, 13. Let's start the oscillator right now. It's sending constant current to the thing. 350 ohm coil. So now let's turn on the uh, oscillator. Okay. It's filling up the capacitor bank. That's why you see that drop. Oh, that's not good. So the power's going into the capacitor bank. I'll show you that. That's the capacitor bank voltage coming up. It's going to be very good coming out between the battery. So the capacitor bank on that red LED pulse. Now it's not broken. When it goes back on, it's that much time. Then it disconnects and fly back to the battery all by itself. I'm getting scared. Oh, wait a minute. Five millivolts, six millivolts. Take the coil over. And so it's picking up voltage. Let's pull it back. Okay. It picks up voltage. No voltage. Now that's because there's only a few turns on here. If I had like a couple hundred turns, that voltage would be a lot higher. And of course your current would go down. Your voltage would go up. So six millivolts on this square. It's just a, I'll just allow this to see the kind of reception. If my hands are getting more than that. If my hands are getting too little. This is really interesting. Is that the, um, that's the, 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 that's the,
Seven now. See that? Fine. Fine, but that's raising its power. Like that's why we charges it up. Right here. This runs the inductor. This does not run the inductor. One time this runs the inductor. When that red LED is closed. But it doesn't really run the inductor when that red LED is lit because this guy is, is before this guy. So the load sees this first. So technically speaking, the capacitor tank is the only thing running the inductor. Now we're reading, instead of zero, we're reading 0.02. So, Change these frequencies and uh, you know, increase the frequency, you'll get more AC output. But to get the idea here is to get the power to EMF, to leave this coil, to leave a stator, pickup one, that, ha that can have enough turns on it to where the voltage is high enough to, to uh, pressurize the power out of the EMF field and into your wire. So that's not enough pressure. So to push the power out of this pickup coil and into something else, like let's say I wanted to send it from here and put it back in here. Well, I would need a lot more than 7 millivolts. I would need at least 16 or 18 volts. This is a 16 volt capacitor bank. So 14 volts is what I'm trying to get. 14 and a half, right over here. So you want to make a coil that picks up 14 and a half volts. And you want to set the frequency so they don't, it only produces 14 and a half volts. Otherwise, no overcharge the cap But you can always put a charge controller on this and, you know, set the frequency however you want. Hook up a, uh, you know, another battery bank, like a, or some kind of dump load, to send the excess. If there's any excess, look, eight now. You still find no more. Let me see. There we go. Okay, so that's not enough turns here. There's only 10 turns on that. You need at least 300 turns in a finer wire. I'm just doing this to get the geometry figured out, and that's a good placement. Which I kind of know it is, because you can feel the pulse back and forth. I don't feel much here, but there's still a field, there's also a field here. The problem is, to pick up AC, you have to have the arms over the north and south. So, there's more north and south on, on this area of the pulse than there is in the center. From what I can sense, it's just nice. It's just stronger on the, uh, right around the edge. Right here, so it's actually really strong right here. On the inside. Much stronger here. Here. Way stronger on the inside. Much stronger right here. Right there. Right here, super strong. Just notice that. It doesn't move because it's, it's, it's 
balls were bouncing back and forth. Work this out. So what I'm gonna do next is try to find a way to wrap the two arms on the inside here, which I can do that. I guess for a smaller coil on the inside. I'm gonna try uh, putting a circular coil in there, and I'll have one arm with a circle here, and the other arm in the back there, going that way, here and in the back. Those are the two arms. I think putting a coil inside here, like each space in here, should have fit a coil in there. Like a gauge. Um, I don't know, gauge 30 or 28, 10 gauge maybe. Take a nice fat coil, so it fills in the whole thing. The arms will be about as thick as my finger, picking up the field. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. I think it's better to put them inside. It was just easier to do this. Thing. Yeah, I can feel a lot more strength on the inside. That's so good. It's going to hit mine now. It's just because the top piece is getting fully charged. You can move the gator coil and see how it drops it here. It's one arm next to that area. So I'm happy with this experiment. It's showing the principles working as they could. Interesting. You know, I only got one arm around the field right now. And it's still picking up AC because, like I said, these balls are flipping. This is going north, south, north, south, north, south, right here. And on the other side, it's doing the same thing. The double pull, double pull either. And I think it's going to pick up better right here. Maybe a thousand turns for coil. Still thin gauge. Put it in there. Get your voltage off of one of them. And then you'll know how to hook up the rest of them in series or parallel. You make your voltage. Let's say you're getting, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. And you're getting, uh, you want 120 volts. Then you would have to make eight times, I guess, 15, you know? That gets you uh, 40 plus 80, 110 volts, no, 120 volts, yeah. That's it, nice. Mm -hmm. So, when you, you wind a coil, it gets you 15 volt volts. Eight of them in series will get you 120 volts. But that's AC, and that's fine. As soon as you rectify that 120 volts, it drops down to about 80. DC, but you don't want to rectify it. You use that AC. Uh, you can use it real time, or you can rectify what you don't use. So you can tap off the AC portion, 120 volts, to run, let's say, something that you run in your house constantly, like uh, the TV. And then whatever the TV doesn't use, the rectifier goes out to the battery bank, captures whatever else you're not using as far as hands is concerned. So it's still increasing. Let's go back to the battery here. Step is to wind the coil with this in here. Something uh, I'm going to have to go with a thin gauge. That's a capacitor over here. Slowly climbing up against the battery. It's a pretty good lesson. Okay. Battery's regaining its yeah, I don't expect that I'm going to get anything to run off these two terminals, the terminal voltage, so I'm not going to bother looking at the light here. If you get to around one volt, look at the LED for it. So with this few turns, you're not going to get that high a voltage. You need to, it's just a testing purpose. 
just a something quick and easy to I can make. I can bend it, shape it the way I want to shape it. I think I'm gonna rewrap this guy to fit in here. Do my next step. See if I get a, a higher millibar reading. I'll do that before I wrap a, a magnet around. Yeah, that's it for this test. I don't see the point of the run because, you know, there's no OU here. This is what I call OU unity. Because the EMF is escaping. Now, it will be captured with a pickup coil. With the right amount of turns and nothing, you get a high enough voltage, you'll be able to force it, the EMF into the coil. And then out, to, out the coil where you want it to go. Then you can, you know, see if you're getting any kind of a extra output or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing else to do here, but you see what will happen is that's a very good one. So it's returning to the original voltage. We won't do that until the capacity is fully charged. Slowly finds up there. The red LED is triggering this transistor to switch the negative from the battery to the negative of the capacitor bank. The positive is still. The blue LED is running the frequency on this. So we're not. 